Polyethylene is an example of a photoemission peak that has inherent asymmetry that is reproducible and it is believed that the asymmetry is a result of a sequence of peaks that have all been offset by a common binding energy. Using the quantification parameters dialog window will create a background to these data and then a sequence of component peaks. So using the components property page if we create a peak then the line shape associated with carbon S has been brought in from the element library and the peak has been positioned as you can see here based on the residual. So let's put the residual on so we can see. So if we were to just add more peaks then the idea would be that the peak would then come in with its independent parameters of area, full width half maximum and position. But this is not what we're going to do. What we're going to do is create a copy of this peak and we're going to add five of these peaks. So these are all of the same size and we're going to apply an offset. So if we take the position constraint and we replace it using a keyword of offset equals and then 0.39. So this represents an offset value that's going to be applied sequentially to all of these peaks one after another. So you can now see that these five peaks have all been assigned a different binding energy and they're all controlled by the first peak that I defined and that's the one in column A. Then I'm going to link the forward half maxima on the basis that these are all supposedly identical peaks. So if I say link, then the parameter constraint for the forward half maximum has been assigned as A star 1, and this is applying to all of these. So they all have the same forward half maximum. And then if I say fit, we produce a sequence of peaks with the same binding energy offset but different intensities that minimizes this residual. The peak model is fitted using an RMS and so it tends to fit to the peak maximum better than the wings. So the next step is to try and adjust the line shapes so that we end up with a fit to these parts of the data here and here that match the fit that we can currently see at the peak maximum. We can do that by adjusting the line shape. So let me just make some adjustments here turning this into two parameters. So we can have a little bit of asymmetry in the line shape. So I'm giving a value that is 1.2 and then 1.28 for the right hand side. So this is the left hand side, this is the right hand side. And I'm also going to adjust the convolution with the Gaussian and make this a bit wider. Now if I press return this is only modified the line shape in column A. If I enter equals and then press return I can update all the line shapes on these data. So you can now see that each component has the same line shape which is consistent with the model that we were attempting to construct that is to say a sequence of identical peaks offset by a binding energy of 0 0.39. If I say fit I end up with a much better fit where not just the peak maximum but also the wings are being fitted by the combination of the line shape and a sequence of peaks all with this common offset. So this represents an example of a peak model that is illustrating the underlying nature of an asymmetric peak for a polymer polyethylene. The quantification of polyethylene is fairly straightforward because we've got a single carbon 1s peak. So other than saying that we have a range of underlying peaks that represent this polyethylene data envelope, the area of these peaks is not necessarily that important. However, for other polymers where similar vibrational type shifts occur for sequences of identical peaks, then having the peak area reported is quite useful. And we can do that using the annotation dialog window and the components property page. The standard report for 
components is obtained by pressing this apply button and you can see the individual peaks have been reported let me just move this so that the next table appears in the place that I would like to see it and that is a table that is constructed from information gathered based on opponent indices so if I press this report then I end up with a table which is populated with no entries at the moment and that's because it's going to make use of these parameters here that are the component index and they're all set to minus one which is not in the range that is used within this report so let me close that now and I'm going to set some values here so if I set that one equal to zero we can now see that the first entry is being added to the report and it corresponds to this first component peak here and if I do it for the second one I have now the second entry but if I set all of these equal to 2 that is all of the components with the index of minus 1 to a value of 2 then it sums the intensity from these final three terms and presents it here so these here have all been combined to produce this third entry here now if I wanted to I could use the index by setting it equal to 2 for these two as well in column A and B and we end up with a single entry that is summing the information from all of these peaks here so a report that is generated based on this component index report will construct quantification information based on these indices 